Hey guys, I'm Orthodon, and we are back for My Hero Academia Season 5, Episode 24. Uh, so yeah, uh, real fast, this show is coming to an end. There's only one more episode after this one, sad day. Uh, and, and we're gonna have to wait till another season comes. But until then, this was an airing show slot, which means that I will be watching something from the Fall 2021 season. Uh, so I will link the poll in the description. Check that out if you want to vote. It's open to everybody. You just need a Patreon account, but you do not need to pay anything to me. Uh, so you just create a free account, vote, and you get to choose what I watch next from the, uh, from the upcoming season. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, last time we had, uh, Gigantomachia show up, right? He's, uh, he was just swimming his way through the city, murdering the shit out of people. Uh, we had a bunch of Shigaraki backstory, which was crazy and brutal and tragic and, like, also just seeing, like, maybe a psychopath being born, you know, where, like, it wasn't even... I almost didn't feel bad for him because he talked about how good it felt to kill people, you know, but I still kind of felt bad because his psychopathic tendencies might not have ever existed if he had a better child life, you know, but I don't know, seemingly, like killing people like quenched the itch that he had so maybe it would have always happened this way you know I don't know I don't know so it was it was a it was a crazy episode to watch brutal probably the worst part was seeing the dog die <laughs> but Shigaraki now remembers that he is the grandson of Nana Shimura we have yet to know if he is aware that she was the holder of one for all which is the antithesis to, you know, his mentor, you know, kind of thing. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm excited to watch the episode, so let's jump into it, shall we? We're going to start here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. <gasps> Pretty rainbow. I'm sure it's not going to be filled with murder anytime soon. Ooh, okay, so we're continuing this. No one helping him. A child with blood on him. Just ignoring him. Hmm. Yeah, he just keeps going. Damn. Oh. Hey, someone. Oh, God. Well, shit. Never mind. Jeez, that face. Uh oh, the itch. Well. And of course, I wonder if All For One had any kind of hand in manipulating that whole scenario, right? Like, like him killing his family. Is it possible that he could have, like, All For One could have had some kind of quirk that manipulated Shigaraki to do that? I don't know. Oh, hey, brother, that's it. With all for one having, you know, it's like the Schrodinger's box of quirks. Like, he could have any quirk you could possibly think of, or he could have no quirks. We have no way to tell. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously we know he has some quirks. Um, but you just never know, like, how many he has, what he could have, you know? Like, literally everything in this show... If you, like, delve deep enough, you could attribute to possibly being All For One's plan or something because of some quirk he has, you know? Hmm. <laughs> 
All right. Here we go. Continue on. Jesus. Freaking stupid people. Oh, they're gonna die. Oh, maybe he's not gonna? Interesting. Jeez, I wonder, like, is that itch part of his quirk? Or, like, what... There's got to be something more to that itch, I feel like, than, like, an actual just, like, need to kill or something, you know? Oh, well, that hand's gone. Oh, is he going to go back and kill him? Oh, he has the hands. Jeez. How does that one stay on its face? Oh man, this music again. It's always so just chilling, seeing and hearing all for one. Hmm. Hmm. Jesus. He's wearing similar shoes to Midoriya. <laughs> Such a manipulation, man. Like... Okay. So it got replaced by just a random hand, maybe one of the people that he just killed. Oh, is that the origin? All right, Tomura Shigaraki origin. Yeah, so was the last episode Tenko Shimura origin? I think that's what it was, wasn't it? Oh, we're back. Jeez. Oh, still so sad that she, like, tried to grab him even in the midst of all that. Shit, he dis he destroyed another hand. Is he done with the hands then, maybe? Is that what that was symbolizing? What? He just, like, blocked it? 
What the hell just happened? Wait, what? What did he just do? He just flung at himself. Interesting. Destroy it before the end of the swing. God, he is all messed up. Unlocked something? What the hell is that stuff? What? What the hell? They have all kinds of crazy equipment. Oh, he can change fear into power too, not just stress? Hmm. Oh. So he's not hiding anymore, so his stress is fading, maybe? What the hell? Oh my god, he's a fucking mecha! This is some crazy shit. Oh! What is it? What? Freaking Gigantomachia. So does he not actually have a face, or is it just shadowed by the hood? Jesus. This thing is insane. Like, we've seen some support equipment. Wow, he just shattered it. Just who cares? Right? Like, so it's like plus ultra. <laughs> Decay through the ground. Yep. It reminds me of frickin' Overhaul, like, shattering the ground whenever he would do that. Has he been decaying him through the ground, like, this whole time, maybe? Or is it something else? Shit, he was frickin'... That's insane that he can decay through the earth. God. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Well, now we know. Jesus Christ. Oh, Gigantomachia. Is this how he wins over Gigantomachia? Oh my God. 
Holy shit, that was like a Deku move. He was like damaging himself. Oh my god. What? Jesus Christ. Well, how the hell? And then he's going to get a power up after this from the doctor. Well, shit. Deku's going to need six other quirks now to freaking deal with his one. Gigantomaki is just frozen. Well. Jesus, that's terrifying. Oh, what? He cut his feet off? Ooh. This music track. Powered up. Oh, shit. <laughs> what? They lost their faith. They need faith in him, right? Or trust in him? Is he gonna die? Oh, shit. Jesus. His hair is so white in this scene. It's weird. Did it change even more with this, like, evolution of his power? Or is it just the way they decided to draw it? Hmm. Wow. Wow! Holy shit! Oh, I didn't notice. He's like cracking. Well. <laughs> One week later. Alright, so that's how they got in. So does that mean Reed Desher lived then? Wow, so they they pinned it on like 20 different people then that had nothing to do with it? Amputate both legs, Jesus. Wow. Jeez. Yeah, it's a cover-up, so people are creating conspiracy theories and shit. <laughs> I did my part to run away. Jeez. 
She's not dead. We already saw her in the future. Why is he all wrapped up? Yeah. Does he have even more personalities now? Yeah. Oh god. Are his eyes always like veiny? Or is he like angry right now so that's why... Another underground area. Jesus, that's a lot of people still. Jackie Tobaki is there. <laughs> people are giving him a wide berth, too. Yeah, his hair is still super white, so he, like, evolved again. Oh, okay. Oh god. Look at that freaking outfit he has on. Jesus. Jeez. Under a new name. Redestro and Spinner? Interesting. The Paranormal Liberation Front. I kind of like it. Hmm. Jeez. Well, shit. So that's how they got control. Oh my god. See ya. Yeah, he's kind of like at his bidding. Yeah, it's much better than League of Villains. Yeah. Made to be. God. Shit. Jesus Christ, so are we gonna get to see what power he gets this season? Like, what that means? Like, does he get more quirks? Does it somehow just boost his current quirk? Which is terrifying, because he already evolved into that quirk being, like, even better. I don't know. Shit. Like, what a crazy episode. I don't know. I don't even know what to think. It's like... When when Shigaraki first showed up, it was like an intimidating design, but his character was so childish that I never really, like, was scared of him, you know? And then they brought up, like, All for One, and then I really wasn't scared of him. He was just, like, this, this little baby still growing. But obviously I could see the potential there. I saw that he was, like, a, you know, obviously an antithesis to Midoriya, where he's gonna be growing throughout the show and everything. But now he's just at the point where he's so damn terrifying, you know? Like, 
he's still not up there with All for One, where, like, when I hear All for One's voice and that music track come on in the background for All for One, I get, like, chills. But, like, Shigaraki's, like, getting closer to that point, but he's still, like, not quite there. God. All right. That is it, guys, for episode 24. So, yeah, crazy stuff. I'm, like, I'm trying to, like, put it all together. So, the Paranormal Liberation Front, I love that name a lot more than League of Villains, and then, like, the, uh, Vaction Vanguard, Action Vanguard Squad or something like that was the, the squad that went at the, uh, the, the little summer camp training thing that they did, like... I like the Paranormal Liberation Front so much better. Like, that's that's a pretty badass name. The more I say it, the more I like it, too. So that's awesome. But Shigaraki, man, leveled up again. Uh, kind of. Or, he didn't quite level up again. He mainly reverted to what he was capable of doing before, where he can just stick his hand on the ground now and just destroy everything in a, in a proximity, which is terrifying. You know, he was even decaying, like, it went through the ground, decayed up through the mech suit, and, like, even got his feet a bit, you know, like, for, for Redestro. That's, like, insane. Uh, I can't, like, Midoriya, because, uh, like, the thing was, is, like, until this power-up, I felt like Shigaraki probably wouldn't win against Midoriya unless he managed to, like, touch him, right? Because that was, like, the big limiting factor is he had to touch him. But if Midoriya can, like, just shoot, you know, wind pressure at Shigaraki over and over again, uh, I felt like Shigaraki just wouldn't be able to do anything. It's like, I mean, we saw Shigaraki try to go up against All Might, and I, I mean, I know Midoriya is, like, a baby version of All Might, you know, but, uh... But I still, like, didn't see it happening. But now, now I'm not sure how Midoriya is going to fight Shigaraki. They've now swapped the roles for me. Because, like, the only thing I... Because, like, Midoriya has to touch the ground. I mean, we saw him in against Overhaul when he was able to use 100%. He was just, like, flying through the sky. That's, like, what he needs to fight. The only other thing I thought of was, uh, can he, like, use Black Whip if he gets better at it and prop himself up in, like, the... Uh, in the air, you know, and use them like Doc Ock arms kind of thing or something like that from Spider-Man. Uh, I don't know. But, like, the other thing is, is when Redestro went to go hit Shigaraki, Shigaraki grabbed it and, like, I think he decayed the purple energy even. So, and he stopped, like, the momentum of it. So, could he just go through the ground and decay the black whips and make Midoriya fall? You know, things like that. It's going to be crazy. I, that's, like, I wonder, because I, I imagine we're going to eventually have a showdown of Midoriya versus Shigaraki, right? But I don't think it's going to, like, I think they're going to have several showdowns before the final one, you know? Which, I mean, the final one might be, like, the end of the show. But, so, like, I wonder, I'm curious to see what that first encounter of, like, Midoriya versus Shigaraki is going to be like, you know? But we are building up to some crazy stuff. We have now built up the villains to be, you know... At, I mean, several of them got a level boost, you know, in, in here. And who knows what the other ones are, are going to get for, like, boosted power kind of thing, you know? Um, so they just, like, grew. Plus, they have this organization now backing them. So they have money. They have followers, you know? So, like, they're, they're set. But... But, yeah, like... It was, like, towards the end there, seeing Redestro being so eager to please Shigaraki, you know? He, like, went from being a this all-powerful leader to these people, and now, you know, Preach, or what, it, what was his name? It wasn't Preach, was it? The, uh, but anyway, the politician guy. Um, he, like, saw, like... And was like, I hate seeing you like this, towards the end there, where he was like, you know, oh, Shigaraki, you want anything? You need anything? And Shigaraki's like, go away. He's like, oh, I'm out of here. And, like, took off, you know? He's just so, so obedient. Like, Shigaraki, I don't know if, like, did Shigaraki scare him so much that this happened? Because it seemed more like through the episode that 
Because, like, at the end, it seems like he was, like, scared of Shigaraki, so he wanted to please him. He didn't want to do anything to upset him. So that's why he is just going along with everything Shigaraki says. But through the episode, it seemed more like his views just changed. And he saw, like, he saw Shigaraki, like, doing what he wanted to do, you know? And I think by by him seeing that, it was it was almost liberating, if you'd say, for him, because he's been following Destro's ideology to the letter, you know, this whole time, and now he's breaking free of that and starting to, like, see his own path, you know? And in that path, he's seeing, you know, not only is Shigaraki using his quirk the way he wants, he's living his life the way he wants, you know? Not bound by any of the restrictions of the world, you know, kind of thing. And I think that's what he maybe came to really respect, and that's why he's, like, all about following him now, you know, and treating him almost like a, a deity kind of thing, you know? So I'm I'm interested to see more of that if it if it is fear or, like, is Redestro up to something? Like, could it be a long con? Like, is he gonna, like, try to, like, take back what is his later on, you know? Or... Or is he just the type, like, that'd be cool if he was just the type of villain that, you know, conceded. Like, he accepted his defeat, and now he's moving on and still in a leadership role, but not, like, the the leader leader. But a lot of those times in these shows, you see the, like, the leader or something having too much pride to let it go to, to someone like Shigaraki, or anyone, for that matter. And you'd see them, like, scheming to get it back in the background, so I wonder if that's going to be a thing, or if it is just going to be, you know, um, face value what it is. He's just following Shigaraki now, you know? But, jeez. That's crazy. We saw more of Shigaraki's backstory of, uh, of him meeting All for One, and, you know, I felt bad for him a little bit going down the street with no one helping him, and then that old lady came up, but then, like, saw his face and was like, uh, I'm sure a hero will come help, making things, you know, worse for Shigaraki. But, like, man, like, I don't know. It's such a mixed feeling because I, I'm i super curious if All for One did something more. Because we had that line from the Doctor saying, finally you've returned to what you were created to be, you know? Which, to me, means that they could have fabricated the situation that led Shigaraki down the path that he's at, you know? Like, what if that, that itch and that madness that caused him to kill his parents was just some kind of effect of a quirk, like All for One was nearby, you know? and Or maybe he didn't even have to be nearby. Maybe he just, like, passed him on the street one day and just imbued... Because he knew... Uh, All for One knew who Shigaraki was. He knew it was Nana Shimura's child, or grandchild. Um, so, like, in, in like this whole plan of his was to get you know, uh, Tenko Shimura, or Shigaraki, down the path of evil in order to spite All Might. So could All for One have, you know, done something, you know, manifested that itch that's in him or something through the means of a quirk? I don't know. I think that'd be a crazy reveal later on, and I wonder if it does get revealed, would that, like, change Shigaraki at all, but Shigaraki still has the itch, even when All for One isn't around, I feel like. So, I mean, unless it's like a permanent thing that he was able to imbue in him, or maybe it started off as a quirk, but then he, like, conditioned him, like, kind of like a Stockholm Syndrome kind of thing, or not quite Stockholm Syndrome, but, you know, like, just conditioning Shigaraki to think that he needs to kill, because that's what it felt like through the episode, that All for One was, like, conditioning him. He kept saying, like, you know, you need to do this, don't feel bad about doing this, and at one point Shigaraki was like, I feel like I could do this, and, you know, I would be forgiven, you know, and I think that's the, that's the effect that All for One is having on him, you know, All for One is manipulating him and trying to turn him into this, you know, perfect psychopath kind of thing, just in order to spite All Might and, and that, and his predecessor, and All Might's predecessor's lineage and everything, so, I don't know. That's all speculation and stuff that's yet to be seen, um, but I think that was a big hint with the Doctor saying, like, what you be, what you were created for. I just don't know if that means, like, everything All for One did from the first time we saw from Shigaraki's perspective meeting All for One, 
Or does that mean it was from even before he met All for One and, and All for One was doing some shenanigans to to force the situation and, you know, what happened to Shigaraki's family? I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and maybe find out or never find out. And it, it is just what it is. And he just manipulated him from when he found him at that point after he had already killed his family and stuff. So, but yeah, because that itch seems weird. Like, I, I talked about it before, how it could be like part of his quirk, like decaying his body, causing it to itch. You know, dry skin can be itchy sometimes. And, you know, we already saw like when he was a child and he like went ham with his powers, his hair went from black to blue, you know, or like a, a bluish, grayish, whitish kind of thing. Um, and then here he went through like another metamorphosis and his hair is white. And I, I talked about how it's kind of like decaying the color out of it, you know, kind of like what, what aging does and, and stuff like that. So I don't know. Um, so it's possible the itchiness is just like a side effect of his, quirk but i don't know why it manifests in a way where he like says it feels better when he kills people so i don't that's the one thing i'm not sure of so um but yeah interesting interesting hmm i felt like there was another part of this episode that i wanted to talk about but i think i covered most of the big things oh the cover-up i didn't talk about the cover-up at all so yeah they covered up the shit out of this so they said it was a group of 20 villains that caused the destruction of Deka city and they they said that the citizens if i understood everything right the citizens of Deka city like took charge together and uh and fought off the 20 villains and captured them um so they were, like, lauded as, you know, like, people were, like, praising the Deka City's citizens and stuff like that. And that also, like, probably benefits the, the Meta Liberation Army or, you know, the newly named uh, uh, Paranormal Liberation Front uh, as, like, beneficial to their cause. Because if you think about it, if ordinary citizens were able to stand up and use their quirks freely to, you know, save this city that is a big push in the direction towards what they want, where they want everyone to just be able to freely use their quirks. You know, they don't want you to have to, like, become a hero to use your quirk to save someone kind of thing. You know, you should just be able to use your quirk, help someone if you want to help someone. Um, I don't know about hurt someone. I, like, they do seem kind of, like, evil. I mean, obviously, I feel like you still need some laws. I don't fully understand, like, that part, you know, because we haven't got to read Destro's book or anything like that. So I do wonder if they're, like... You know, I mean, they're working with the League of Villains now, so, I mean, obviously they're up for, for hurting people. Um, but with, like, the book's ideology, is that, is that like, really the thing? Like, is it, is it something where they even want you to be able to go around and hurt people with quirks as well? But, like, really, that's just going, like, with... That's going against laws that have always been in the world, regardless of quirks or not in the world. Like... You could, you know, there's always been laws where you, you don't hurt people, you get in trouble, you know? So, I don't know. Um, I wonder how broad they want to be with, like, free quirk usage and stuff like that. But, but yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting what kind of path they take now, since Shigaraki is all about, you know, destruction and stuff like that. Are they, are they even going to be still living up to the ideology of the Liberation, Metal Liberation Army that, that the original Destro started? Probably not. Shigaraki is probably going to take them down a, a much darker and, and evil path, and and that's just how it's going to be, and we might not, you know... When when the Metal Liberation Army was first brought up, I thought it was going to be, like, one of those things where, like, oh, I kind of understand their point, but really, since the begin... Like, since we actually met a lot of their, like, senior members, I, I don't really see it that way. I just see them as another villain group, you know? Because I thought it was going to be, like... You know, maybe this not, like, kind of neutrally faction where they're, like, sort of good but sort of bad. Like, they do bad things to further their agenda towards, like, doing good with it, you know? Um, but they just seem more villain, like, just another villain group that's just bigger to me, you know? 
So, I, I didn't see anything redeeming of them being like, okay, well, yes, we do some bad stuff sometimes, but overall we're doing it for for the good of, you know, the future, so that way everyone can use their quirks without having to be licensed, you know, but but really, like, they just wanted to destroy the League of Villains just because, like, did the League of Villains even do anything to antagonize the Meta Liberation Ar Army to start this whole thing? I'm trying to remember if they said why. They just, like, suddenly called and said, like, come here now or else we'll leak your location to the heroes. Like, I don't know that we ever even got a reason as to why they wanted to go take out the League of Villains, you know? But, but yeah. Um, we might have gotten it and I just forgot. But yeah, anyway. Crazy, crazy stuff. Boop -a -doop -a -doo. Gigantomachia is on their side now. Um, so that's, uh, that's interesting. Just seeing the destruction and craziness that Shigaraki caused. And, and seeing, you know, this leader of a big organization bow to Shigaraki just shook Gigantomachia as well. I'm kind of sad we... We didn't get to see too much of Gigantomachia, like, wrecking shit. Like, we saw him, like, running through the town, like, barreling through people and buildings and, and stuff like that, which was cool. But I was hoping to see a little bit more from him. We still don't even really know, like... Because he, he has multiple quirks, right? We just don't know how those quirks work. Like, it seems like he's, like, big. He gets bigger when he's awake and then shrinks down when he sleeps or something, right? Is what they said or something like that. And we've seen him, like, just hit things really hard and destroy them and break things. Like, so far we've just seen kind of, like, super strength from him. So, like, I wonder what other quirks he has. Because they said, like, he had the stamina to be able to hold multiple quirks right away. So, it seems like he does have multiple quirks. But we've only seen him use a super strength. Is it just, like, extra things to augment that super strength to be better? Or does he have something like Midoriya having super strength and having black whips, you know? Is he going to whip out something like crazy like that later on? I don't know. Who knows? But we didn't get to see much of that. So I guess Gigantomachia's fighting capabilities will have to be put to the test later. I want to see Giganto. Like, I don't know. I don't think he stands a chance unless, like, he levels up a lot. But I want to see Gigantomachia versus Kirishima just because, like, he already, like, Gigantomachia already has that, like, rock-like stuff on his back, you know? And then, uh, uh... Kirishima uh, has that when he, like, hardens up, especially when he does his, like, super hardening. He has kind of, like, the spiky, rocky stuff coming out of his back a bit, too. So <laughs> I just thought it would be funny to see both of them, like, head-to-head. -head. But uh, with Gigantomachia's strength, that's, like, seems like ten times, if not more than ten times, the strength of uh, uh, Rapa. Something like that, I think, from the overhaul arc. Um, Rapa, maybe? I think it might have been an A, not an O. Um, but, but yeah, and he couldn't take that guy, you know, he still got, well, he did take, uh, some hits once he, like, got his motivation back, but he still got really messed up fighting him, so we're gonna have to see some serious level up to see him, like, you know, take some hits from Gigantomachia, you know? Uh, it probably will never happen anyway. I'm sure, like, if, if that fight ever comes to be, it'll be, like, Midoriya versus Shigaraki, and then, like, Gigantomachia being taken by, like, Bakugo or something, I don't know. But, yeah, I'm, and then, like, Dobby versus, uh, frickin', uh, Todoroki. I don't know why I forgot his name for a second there. But anyway, um, nothing that matters. That's probably so far away, I feel like. Like, we haven't even started the build-up, I feel like, to Midoriya fighting Shigaraki in any sense of the way. But who knows? It could come out of nowhere, though. Um, but they definitely built up Shigaraki to be terrifying, though, for sure. Anyways, I think that's really all I have for this episode, guys. That's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you did. Check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel and get more content from me. The link is in the description. Also, make sure you check out that poll that I mentioned. Link is in the description for that, too, to pick what's replacing this show. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in my future reactions. Bye-bye.